Hello, Darren. Hello, Darren. Uh, what are you painting? I'm painting Harry Seacombe. <laughs> I am <laughs> painting here uh, the record cover uh, of a Harry Seacombe album, and it's called The Magnificent Voice of Harry Seacombe. Um, on wood, as you can see, this is on on plywood. Um, it's 12 by 12. So it's like a proper album cover. And um, typically I've chosen uh, a subject that no one will ever want to buy. Oh, I, I, I because you said yesterday you had to paint Harry Seacombe, I assumed that this was... Uh, um, I assumed that this was for a, a commission or something. No, no. He but just, then um, I, I suppose you're right. Who would commission? <laughs> yeah. Nobody would. He popped up in conversation yesterday morning. Um, and um, basically, uh, Becky th thought I was doing an impression of him when I was doing an impression of Bing Crosby. Oh, the things married couples get up to in bed on a Sunday morning. And um, so uh, I then said, no, Harry Seacombe sounds like this. Find track on Spotify. And... Um, it was this album cover, and I just saw it and thought, I have to paint that. He's big, he's big, fat face. It looks really like. And I think this is a face. thing we haven't uh, we haven't covered in Brentwood Tuxedo before. Um, you recreating record covers. Yeah, I do it. Um, I don't do it as much these days. I do now and again. And about four years ago. I painted over 50 in about two two months, maybe two months. Um, so much so that I amassed enough for um, a book of all my little record covers, of which there are many. This is what started it off. I don't know if you can see that. This was... um a note on an index card that I wrote as a, to remind myself to paint Errol Brown. And um, I did, painted the hot chocolate cover, and it just went on from there. I just kept going to Top of the Pops covers. we got Scylla, got Scylla's teeth. So, yeah. I think it's a really, really interesting idea and i think it, it's it's i think it's i've got this book and i i feel now like i need to look at it again because i'm seeing some i've forgotten this I serge gansborg painting is now in la how cool is that <laughs> <laughs> that, that the roxy music one is really good it <laughs> um it uh What what are you doing? You're doing lots of things to to context, and 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 you're doing sort of like I feel like it quotes Warhol a little bit, you know, painting of of, of soup cans, and Brother. you're painting other people's art. So yeah. in some ways, it's like a homage to someone else's design, and it's kind of interesting what ones like you. Yes, very well done. Yes, yes, <laughs> I, I know what's going on there. <laughs> It's a really good multi-layered joke, and I, I can see more than anything else you've done why people would want these on their wall. But it's a strange thing to want on your wall, especially when you can buy those frames where you could put the record in. Yeah, and the I, the thing you've done with the typeface is really interesting. So you've sort of you've refused to copy anyone's typeface basically, haven't you? And you always do it in your own handwriting. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know why though, don't you? Because you wouldn't be able to. Yeah. It's just easier. <laughs> yeah. But it's not though, is it? I mean, I've done the ABBA. Done the ABBA right. logo. It, it, it is easier, but, but that's not entirely the reason why you're um, doing it like that though, is it? Yeah. But, I think there is a sense of humour in them. 
there, well, I mean, there is, but kind of came afterwards. I think it's interesting hearing you talk about it because part of me is thinking, huh? is that what I'm doing? I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's, there's lots to say about it, and I don't necessarily know whether I've got all the words to say about it. But <laughs> I, I do think it's 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 quite a clever idea. And I think I want one as well. I think when I see them, I just think, oh, I need to buy one of these off of Darren or commission him to do one. Maybe I need you to paint one of my record covers. Maybe that's what I need. One of your existing record covers. Yeah, but then again, that doesn't seem right, does it? Well, there are a couple of, there are certain rules I have with how, how I choose them. Um, the main one is, Got to be mostly photographic. Got to be mostly a portrait. Well, because you know, ultimately, I paint faces. That's what I do. Ultimately, you paint faces, and also, this is a thing we've touched upon before. It's like when I'm drawing a building, and the building has a logo or has some uh, art in it, or if I'm painting an object. When I paint some art, yeah. I think it's a weird thing when you're painting someone else's work, right? So I'm doing yeah. it when I do the Star Wars figures. Really, I'm painting someone else's design, and so there's layers of of copying. There's layers for the Star Wars fa- figures. Someone in the movie has designed the costume, then someone molded a figure. Then I'm painting yeah. the figure, so we've got f- three or four layers back. Yeah, and so. So it's something I tend to avoid. Sometimes when people ask me to paint a certain building, but what they like about the building is the typeface. It's like, I don't know if I can pull this off because what you like is that very modernist or deco typeface. And I don't think my wibbly wobbly uh, style can do it. Um, yeah. And But you are doing that. You are often sort of saying, right, this is someone else's composition but then it's not it's, there's a, a weird question about um there's a weird question mark about authorship in in these pictures and that's what i quite like have you ever looked to see if anyone else has done something like this there is there's only one person that actually there are more than one person I'll tell you why one thing that inspired me to do it was um seeing an article about um, someone called Mingering Mike. Ah, yes. Do you remember Mingering Mike? An American, I'm not sure if it's an American artist or these were fake, a series of uh, fake record covers. Yes. All, I think they were all for the, this imaginary R&B act. Yeah. Mingering, Mingering Mike, Mike was, it was found in a thrift shop and it was uh, a young guy, I think, who imagined himself as this artist mingering mike yeah and uh painted like a whole discography of this imagined character yeah yeah and so that kind of introduced me to the idea of um painting record covers um but i decided to do tributes paint my own versions of existing album covers rather than invent some i have invented a couple um, but not many. What ones have you invented? Um, so there are two for um, an imaginary Australian early 80s punk band called the Collingwood Haircuts. <laughs> um, two of them, and they both have um, the album covers have, have both got some um, players from the um, Australian Rules, uh, Aussie Rules Football Club, uh, Collingwood. Not sure what the full name of the team is. One of, I can't remember the title of the second one. The first one's titled, um, I Bleed in Black and White. So that's the colours of this strip. <laughs> it sounds quite punk. Uh, and I did a fake Turkish, Turkish artist as well, inspired by a lot of the um, world music album covers. Um, text heavy, a lot of patterns and design on that one. But mostly I do my own. But the other person, I was going to say, the, the, the other person I've seen who does them uh, is a guy called Henry Miller. And 
he's the father of, of Stanley Miller, who drew that um, Darren uh, comic that you Darren comic we looked at the other day. Yeah. And he paints his in uh, enamel, and they're really good, really. They, they're not a million miles away from mine in that they're representations of actual covers, but they, they're very stylistic. They, be, they become their own thing. Why isn't Darren drawing, I hear the audience ask? Oh, yeah. You're not started yet. I am going to do more drawing than you, quicker, because I'm going to do one of my paintings where I paint the instrument of a musical artist in the time it takes me to listen to a song. It would be great if we could all hear the song, but alas, we can't because of copyright reasons. So yeah. I'm going to play it in my headphones and sing it to you so the song, uh, let me have a look. It's three minutes, 22. So I'm going to right. kick it off. And in three minutes, two, 22, I'm going to play, pl draw the instrument whilst channeling the music of this thing. Are, are you ready? Yes. Go. She does it right. She does it right. I do actually. Where we that line? <laughs> right. What do we think? What do we think? <laughs> <of those guitars? laughs> <laughs> That's right. Where's a famous Telecaster? Charlie says Splash, splash, splash. Blah, 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 blah. Amazing. Oh, oh blimey. Oh, oh. Bit of detail on detail on that. Yeah. Detailing now, I think. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's hot every night. <laughs> dang, 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 oh, dang, yeah. dang, 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 dang. Going for it now. Oh, it's finish. It's longer than I thought. Is that a dead stop? The end. Oh, is he still going? Still going. How how was that as a viewing experience? Marvelous. It was marvelous. Must admit, I was listening more than viewing. Um, but um, I'm a big fan of um that music, whoever it is. 
it's Wilco Johnson from the yeah. Doctor Feelgood, who uh, passed away a few days ago. I think it's Sadly, ago. did it's last Monday he actually died. Poor old Wilco. Although, in some ways, lucky old Wilco. Because as we know, he wasn't expected to live as long as he did. Yeah, true. I took my wife uh, to see Wilco Johnson, and he had Norman Rockroy on bass. Oh. And she spent the whole, the whole first few songs just going, Jesus Christ, Jesus <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot yeah. of that's a lot of man on stage isn't it when you've got Wilco Johnson and Norman Monterey <laughs> um, right wow Into, that's a hell of a combination well I mean that that was I mean that was his band for about the last 15 20 years wasn't it just a tight was it? that's who the drummer was yeah young drummer but Norman Monterey was Wilco's bass player <laughs> Um, I know exactly what I'm going to do next. Two very unique and talented musicians. <laughs> Two players who you could quite quite easily say more is more as well. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they really sort of you know feel the song with their their musicality. Uh, Norman, uh, I mean, most bass players hate Norman Watroy purely because of all the hours they spend trying to copy his uh, "Hit Me with Your Rhythm Stick" bass line. Um, is it? Is it, is, it, is it? Is it true? The uh, is it true that he plays the bass on "Relax" by Frankie Goes Hollywood? No idea. Never. I've never heard that before. But it. it, uh, it I mean, okay. it could I, be. I'm going to look it up. It was notoriously it, old session players, wasn't it? Yeah, I think the story I heard is that it, it had a, a different bass line and he came in and they wanted him to do something, you know, hit me with your rhythm stick like, you know, very yeah. sort of um, funky. Yeah. Um, let, let's, let's, let's just find out if this is even true before we start. Um. Oh, it was on Jesus of Call. Did you know that? No, I didn't. I've got that as well. Didn't know he was on that. Yeah, yeah. So he pre he did the bass line on Relax. And so the story is, is that he right. went in and said, y y y and they were trying to get him to be funky. And he said, no, you know how the bass should go on this. It should go, dum, 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 which it, of course, <laughs> does. Um, and now here's my fee. Thank you very much. Yeah, what I love about Relax, it's um, <laughs> song that dads may catch themselves singing along with, but then <laughs> enter themselves. Relax, don't do it when you want. Mm -hmm. Relax, don't do it when you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like shying away from the more sexy aspects of the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> um. I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, which band do you think, on average, have have made the worst record covers? Because oh, yeah. I have an argument to present for a certain band. Oh, well, have you got... Is it is it an obvious one that you think I could probably go up, guess what you think, or... Well, they're actually one of my favourite bands. I am sure they're a band you love too. They're a band we've talked about, I think, even in the last run with Tuxedo or recently we've talked about them. Yeah, why can't I think of them? Okay. Well, let me give you, let me put forward the case yeah. for the kinks in the 1970s. Ah. Really putting <laughs> forward some shockers. Uh, yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Let me present to you a state of confusion. Uh, it's bad. All of it. All of it's bad. <laughs> There's none of it good. The photo's terrible. The text, the colours. 
let me put it to you that everybody's in showbiz is also no, a stinker. I think it's a stinker. I think that is very, what year is that? 71, 72, uh, maybe even three. Yeah, I'm not sure. Actually, I'm just, I'm just up my eyes. 72. Yeah, I think there were a lot of album covers around that time that look like that. Ring Rod Stewart's got one that's similar sort of style. No, I'm not excusing it. It is terrible. Word of mouth by uh, the Kings. That's extremely bad 80s, like wanting to be 80s. <laughs> okay, something really special now. Yeah, a dear me, dear, dear me. <laughs> Awful. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> I mean, the, the contents are as bad as the cover. And you, you know what? With that one, actually, that kind of looks more modern than it is now. Uh -huh. Oh, with all that neon, that's that's like a, a sister album to Misfits. That yeah. otherwise. Not good. Well, also, I mean, I mean, this is this is this is what gets me about the next one. I'm going to show you. I mean, I showed you this one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they pretty much do the same cover again. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess um, hypnosis were busy, were they? Right. Are you ready for another real time? Uh, guitar drawing whilst I play the song. Well, I've barely recovered from the last one, but yeah. yeah. So let's try and guess. Yeah, this one is uh, 3 minutes 37. I'll see you the other side, okay? Yep. Oh, oh no, it stopped. Hold on. Thank God for that. This is this is hammer to fall. I think this is hammer to fall. That's that's Brian May's red special. Yes, it is. It's no time at all. Waiting for the hammer to fall. Uh, uh, I don't think he can hear me. Uh, Do you reckon? Going to remind us. Oh, it's a little keyboard bit. I hadn't noticed Ryan before. Ryan May. Ryan May ding, built ding, his ding, own ding, guitar. Ding, ding, ding. I think he's going to remind us that it was built from an old fireplace. Hello, <laughs> And I've got to pretend that I wasn't aware of that fact. <laughs> Bless. The fall. How much of fall's great? Single version is a different song. Or is it the album version? They're both different. Oh, no. Got extra bits. Get you to buy both uh, copies. Not that Queen were ever cynical about their business dealings. <laughs> oh, there we go. Solo. <laughs> I feel like I'm painting Peter K here. Banana, 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 <laughs> for the hammer to fall. You're just giving it away. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Give it to me one more time. <laughs> Can you still see his guitar? <laughs> How would I fall? Oh, still going. Have you guessed who it is and, and, and what guitar it is yet? I haven't bloody clue, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Queen. Huh? It is, it's it Queen. is the Queen. And it's Brian May's Red Special. Wow. I got it pretty quickly. <laughs> I like that kind of singing when you don't really know the lyrics. <laughs> I got it when you started going, basically at the start when you're going, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you know what would really make me laugh is if we actually got flagged for copyright based on my... <laughs> Do you, uh, do you have anything interesting to tell us about that guitar you just painted? Sorry? Do you have anything interesting to tell us about that guitar you just painted? Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, or do, do, do you have anything interesting to say about um, um, the pick he uses on it, possibly? <laughs> um, Jesus, uh... what do you think is the most known uh rock story like what is the most repeated rock story what is the rock story where that, that you know did you know that nearly everyone knows I mean, I think Brian, the, the story of Brian May's guitar is up there. I think Paul McCartney and yeah. how he wrote Yesterday is up there. Yeah, oh. yeah. That's what I've gone, I've gone the wrong way around, haven't I? No. Oh, you're back then if you were. Hmm. These are, uh, there are a few hairy old stories, aren't there? There's Keith Moon driving the car into the swimming pool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, what an arsehole <laughs> yes quite often a dick mostly a dick <laughs> there's certain rock stars where every story just compounds to tell you you, you know you want records by them but you'd never want to meet them mm. so I have a bit of a dilemma here in that I think I'm running out of paper to do my stupid uh, speedy guitar paintings, which is the problem with that is, is that I need the paper to continue to do my yeah. <laughs> Well, also, I mean, I'm not going to finish this in the time of one video, I don't think. So don't worry if you think I, you need to stop. Um, that's fine. I've got a lot of text to do and stuff. I think I've done his face. I you Peter have painted Peter K? No, that really looks like Harry Seacombe. That's that's a, that's a <laughs> strong likeness, Darren. Oh, um, oh luckily. What I do you found, think? Oh, I found. Oh, I found tons of papers. We can we can do we can do some more. That's all right. What do you think makes a good record cover? Because I was I was asked this in an interview um, about my paintings, and I didn't have a bloody clue. I don't know if there is a particular set set um, rule apart a kind from apart from like strong image. Uh, oh, here's a thing I've reminded myself. Don't forget that question. But here's the thing that something that needs to stop, and I feel very strongly about it. And it's mostly men on Twitter. And it's when they post a picture of an album cover that doesn't have the name of the artist on the album cover and they just say, like, now playing, this is brilliant, and they don't tell you who it is. 
That needs to stop now. <laughs> Dear Elon Musk, sorted out. <laughs> are you suggesting that people are posting things in that in, when they're doing that that are, are, are obscure? The they what the the albums they're posting are obscure. Yeah. Uh, some of them is, are. It, is it a kind of thing I bet you wouldn't only it's, it's like what's that uh, Twitter phrase um, if you know you know yeah well I, I'm not sure they're doing it deliberately um, but they're doing it without thinking at least that if there's an album they're listening to and it's so good wouldn't you want everyone else to know <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you. So uh, there's and there's a, there's a particular one at the moment um, by an artist called Is it Ways Blood? Oh right, yeah. Now I don't know who she is. I've never heard of her until this album cover came out, and uh, it doesn't have the artist's name or the name of the album on the cover, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that. I wouldn't paint it unless it was actually Roxy Music. Um, but if you're sharing something that you love and you want more people to hear, tell people who it is. Don't, don't just, I, the only way I found out who that was was by doing a Google image search because I wanted to know what people were loving. Yeah. I've since heard yeah. it and so I just don't like it anyway, but that's besides no, the I, point. I, I, I can get behind your campaign. I'm with you. Yeah. I feel like I, I feel like things come come in threes, and I think I I want to do a third one, but I'm not entirely sure if I know who I'm going to do. Um, should we decide together rather than it be a quiz this time? Okay. Well, I I mean I've been pestering you to do uh, Eddie Van Halen's guitar for a while now. All right. Okay. Sure. Let's do that. It, if my, memory, my memory serves me correct. It's it's sort of white with red stripes on it, isn't it? And uh, and black as well. Right. I know which song I'm going to do. So 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 in that sense, there can still be an element of uh, guesswork on your part. Yeah. Guess the song. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, from my singing. I mean, of course you can. I mean, I, I'm a professional singer. I mean, of course you're going to be able to tell. Yeah, this is exactly. well, this is this is going to be difficult though, isn't it? This is a, 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 a more the guitar. Oh, it looks like he has several that all have varying, yeah, variations on that design. On yeah, he does it. He, he does them himself. He just sticks a lot of tape and paint and stuff on them. And so, yeah, in that I case, did. I might. Is there one that's more famous than others? Frankenstrats. Frankenstrat is what it's called. Yeah, that's the, the most famous one. Okay. Yeah, comes straight up. Okay, yeah, I see. And it's kind of quite it's kind of quite busted up, isn't it? It's got like um Yes, it's a wreck, yeah. Goodness. That is quite a challenge. <laughs> you know, given the given the time I'm constraining myself to, but um, yeah, take, I mean, take your time to, have, you know, no, 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 rules, rules are rules. No, I, I mean, like, uh, huh? you, you're allowed time beforehand to try and have a little work. Yeah, I think, I, think what I, might need, like, I think what might be useful for this is some uh, white acrylic. Yeah, so I'm just going to get some acrylic out. Very much in danger of ruins, ruining some clothes off some furniture now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness, this one hasn't even been opened. Oh, yes, it has. Right, okay, yes, I reckon. Yeah, that'll do that. Right, okay. I'm just going to go and wash my brushes. Okay. I guess it if anyone watched the um, Brentwood Tuxedo, the Sweeney episode, you might remember me complaining about my brushes. But a lot of new brushes, which is nice. 
Now let's get some new ones. We've got one of these. You see that with the weird angle. Don't know what it's for. Maybe you can do a nice straight line. Oh, we'll see. Right. Right. I'm back. I didn't hear what you said. Nah. Talking about my new brushes. Got some load of new paint brushes. Right. Okay, I I'm looking forward to it. this. This this will be interesting, this one, I think. I know which song it's going to be. Okay. Yeah. Um... Oh, now, this is interesting. Considering I would call myself a very fair weather Van Halen fan. Yeah. The song I want, want is not in um, the top five on Spotify. Right, okay, yeah. Hold on. I may know which one you choose. I think you've told me there's one in particular you said you've liked a couple of times. Right. Three minutes 47, which I'm grateful for the slightly lengthier pop song, given how hard <laughs> the guitar is. Right. Uh, okay, let's go. <laughs> I know it already. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, it stopped. Every time we touch, hey, don't remember that. Where to begin? I feel I may have to contact one of Darren's oh, didn't London that friends bridge. to check if he's okay. Where it's got what it takes. There we go. So tell me why can't this be love from the heart? <laughs> so tell me why can't this be love? Other, other singers are available. I reckon this is a real challenge. I don't know how I'm going to get these shapes on. I need no. to dry it. <laughs> I think I'm fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, got got him. Him. It's got what it takes. So, so tell me why can't this be love? Oh, it's straight the heart. Oh, tell me why can this be love? Dear me, are you okay? I can't hear you. Can help, Darren. <laughs> I've got headphones on. <laughs> 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 bum 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 it's got what it takes yeah tell me why can't, why can't this be love, be love? Bum, 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 bum. Oh, tell me why can't this be love why can't this be love Get to know why can't this be love 
Why this be love? <sighs> oh, well, that exhausted me, that. <laughs> Remarkable. <laughs> I think that cost me some clothes. Uh, my dining table, and 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 one of my favourite brushes, <laughs> <laughs> and and some record sales. <laughs> I'm never watching. Several these, fans have just unfollowed from your Bandcamp account. <laughs> well, like, I mean, you know, it, it is a picture, isn't it? Yeah, I said his guitar. <laughs> 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 uh, well, that certainly made a break from um, all of the uh, pet paintings I've been doing today. Marvellous. <sighs> Marvellous stuff. You never did tell me what makes a good album cover. Oh. Um, Give it um, a go. I think I, I think I like clear titling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what makes a good rebel cover? Uh, uh, I understand why you like record covers with the artist's face on. Yeah, it's a, it's a and, technical and, and, and what, thing, isn't it? Yeah, but I, it, in this day and age, now, I'm going to put one more splat on this. Is this a bit uneven in the splats down the bottom? It needs a splat. Yeah, that's better. Um, I find the decision to put your own face on the front of a record weird to the point of maniacal. <laughs> like, right. like, like the arrogance to be a singer and think this art that I've put on, this, this art that I've slaved several years over, I think what people need is my face on the front. W what? What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting when when I was asked what makes good album cover, you know, I said I, I have no idea. I said I, I know what makes a good Darren Riley painting album cover, which is a face on the front. But that's not what. I don't think it's what makes a good album cover. Yeah, I'm not really like saying that them. I don't like record covers with their face on. And I think, you know, with like jazz records, I love a beautiful photograph of Coltrane on the front. And uh, yeah, and 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 for different eras. And I love Beatles covers. You know, I love the cover to Rubber Soul, that kind of elongated yeah. photo of them. But what I'm saying is now, I don't know. I just feel like we should have grown out of that or something. Like the right, and it's like a, an author wouldn't do it, would they? Like, imagine that Stephen King on his next book said, Oh, yeah, what do you want for the cover? Yeah, my face. Why? Because I wrote it. Yeah, but what's it about? Doesn't matter. It should have my face on it. Shouldn't it have something relating to the content? No, it's all it's me. I wrote every word, so my face on the front, right? It'll sell more copies because people see right. it and they'll say, Oh, there's Stephen yeah. King. Yeah, and that seems like such a weird thing if you if you. Take, you know, movie posters. Martin Scorsese, we're doing in the front of this poster, my face. But it's about gangsters and stuff. And, and do you not want somebody <laughs> act? No, I wrote it and I, I directed it, so my face goes on the front. <laughs> <laughs> I want someone to do that, though. Because <laughs> <laughs> in... in a lot That's of a good song, isn't it? That's song. Sorry? That's a good song, that, isn't it? Why it can't it be loved? Song. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's good in that it's um it's very unique sounding. There wasn't wasn't really anything else that sounded like that. Yeah, I, I, actually I, I had to check I had the right track at the beginning at the beginning, because I, I I'd forgotten that it starts off with that low synth thing. Yeah. <laughs> These paintings get better as they dry. As, as the chaos starts to become permanent. 
<laughs> oh, Atlantic text. Well, I was rather grumpy this morning, and this, you cheered me up. I cheered myself up, actually. I don't know why I was grumpy, just grumpy. <laughs> well, also, I mean, I'm, I'm selling these Doran in the same time uh, guitar pictures on, on the internet, you know, and I think it's perhaps good for there to be proof <laughs> that I do do them for the song. Yeah. Do you know who else does something like this? You won't be surprised if you don't know. Um, uh, tell me. Jim Moyer, formerly Vic Reeves. He does song, he does, he doesn't do, tell me he doesn't do exactly what I'm doing here. He does the uh, cover of the single in the time it takes to play the single. Oh, okay. That is a bit similar. Yeah. Well, uh, hopefully no one thinks I'm copying him. No, well, you've only just found out, so no. He does it in charcoal so he can get them the, uh, basically, same as you, you know, it's, it would be very hard to do it in pen alone. Um, you need a, a medium that is going to be, you can cover large spaces of paper with one, one yeah, stroke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what I should do, actually, with, with, when I'm doing these, is I should clean everything between it. it, it, it. I mean, what would be really good is if right. I had, I should have brushes set over here with each colour on. Yeah. But then again, if I start to sort of prepare too much for it, I, 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 I'm going to be losing the spirit of... You know, the spirit of it is, is that I'm going into it not knowing how the hell I'm going to do it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to keep working on this. I'm going to finish oh. it today. Okay then, I shall leave you to that. Really good. That was um, definitely the most energetic room I've seen I've done. I feel like asleep now. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Darren. Bye, Darren. <laughs>